I wanted to say a message today. I'm going to try to keep it short and I want us to have communion. But I wanted to say something just because of the times again we're in. Of course, I, you know, in the Bible it says to give the meat to the sheep in its season. The shepherds are meant to give the meat to the, to the sheep, to the people of God, to his people in its season. I have to know what its season is to give you the right stuff at the right time. Um, I'm, I don't want to be talking about peace when it's time for war, and I don't want to talk about war and build you up for war when it's time for peace. You understand? So you know what I've been speaking about. If you don't, go on the, the YouTube, uh, not my, yeah, YouTube channel. Some of, the, some of the videos I can't put on YouTube anymore because if I mention the word uh, pandemic, which now I can't put that here, or COVID uh, or vaccine, they have algorithm and they take down the videos. They've already taken away my one channel, the Andrew Yohannu channel I had. Now we have the God's Way TV channel still. So I'm trying to be careful. So every time I talk in the way that they are trying to hide from people, so they take down videos, I've, I've started a new channel called God's Way TV and look into it on uh, Rumble. Rumble is, a, is like a, just like YouTube, but it doesn't stop people's videos, okay? And I like, Rumble better than BitChute. There's another one called BitChute, but BitChute has also been taking down people's videos now, recently. So I stopped looking at BitChute as well, like I was just using Rumble. I'm not saying it won't be taken over sooner or later as well, because that's what they do. Once they see something's powerful and gaining more people, they take it over. But for now, that's what I'm doing. But in, because of this, I spoke about some crazy things for the last two weeks. Go check out the videos. Well, one of them's up. One of them I'm still finishing off so I can upload. One of them was up tonight, today, about our genes and why these mRNA vaccines are all to do with genes. But today I'm not talking about any of that. I'm going to talk about something that's happening because of what they're doing with the oppression, because of the COVID thing that's happening, the agenda that's, that's unfolding around the world to everybody, to so many nations. And you see the nations that have not been corrupted yet, I'm not saying they're not corrupted in their governments, but they haven't been taken over by, this, by these uh, handful, people call them the elites, they're not elite, there's not, nothing elite about them, they're just very wicked, vile uh, people that need Jesus. They worship Satan, okay, they're not elite. We keep complimenting them like they're elite above, they're not above. They stole all their riches through generations of family line. But what I've seen is also through us, I've been getting phone calls, messages, uh, I've, I've been in groups, especially in Australia. In Australia, they're, they're worse off than what we're going through right now. If you see some of those videos, it'll make you cry what they're doing to people. A 70 year old woman gets knocked out by a cop. Once she gets thrown down on the ground, she gets sprayed with pepper spray. Crazy stuff they're doing like there's no heart because they're not wearing a mask or because they protested peacefully. <laughs> And then the cops attack them, so they retaliate. But because of this, and this whole get vaccinated, don't get vaccinated fight argument, I'm getting messages and, of husbands splitting up with their wives, man. Hearing of this kind of stuff, like it's gone so far of how Satan is attacking that families are splitting up because one is for vaccination, is yes, we should get it. The other one says we shouldn't. And it gets so far, the arguments and the fights in the house that they split up. Not just one time, I'm hearing this, it's happening a lot now. Friends not speaking to each other. Family members not speaking to each other. Like you say that you're not going to get vaccinated and the way they'll turn on you is like crazy. You're an idiot, you're this, you're that. Like stuff, it's like, wow, man, come on. Why would you hit me so personal? And, he, and, he, and it's, the, what I want to talk about today is we need to stay in the spirit more than ever through this time that's happening right now because it's very easy to get pushed a little bit. Remember, think of what Jesus said these words. He said, narrow is the way. So think of a narrow road, okay? Think of it even, even more like this, like you're walking like this, like a balance rope. And that's the path of Jesus. And it's very easy to fall on the left or on the right. And you'll get pulled so what's happening is I've seen that people that have learned about this agenda with the vaccines, how they are really 
it was an agenda to really harm people. There was nothing good about them and they're not going to do anything good. In fact, that's why people are getting boosters and getting more vaccinations because if it really worked like they were claiming, so it shows their lies. They would not need another vaccine. They, they're protected. So why are you worried about the unvaccinated? You're protected. It doesn't even make sense. There's no logic in what they're saying and what they're doing. But we need to make sure that our heart stays within in the spirit. I'm talking, this message is for Christians. Because I'm, what I'm saying that husbands are, are, are splitting up with their wives, I'm talking about Christians, man. I'm not talking about non-Christians. Over this situation, it's so spiritual, it's so demonic that this can happen, where you, can, you might have, have actually decided to investigate the evidence, all right? Because anyone who investigates the evidence with a true heart will not want to get this vaccination, vaccinate, vaccine, okay? So once you go this far, once you, if you keep looking at the evidence and then you find out that it wasn't just stops at the vaccine, but there's a massive agenda, it, it can get you, it can creep you out, it can start getting you anxious and fearful and angry. And why are they doing this to us? Why? And it gets like this to a place where you turn your household into a place where it's no peace there. Because you, a Christian, when found the truth in an area, but it also fell to the other side, and also being used by the devil, also deceived, and are used to bring uh, destruction. The works of the flesh, the works of the devil, you're being used to do as well into your own family, into your own friends. So you've got to be careful. So that's what I want to talk about today. Making sure that as we walk this out, this whatever, how long it's going to go, from, from my understanding, I'm, I, I haven't been watching the main news, but from my understanding, I know that Canada and Australia, I don't know of the other ones, are the worst right now. They are literally turning into a communist regime. Crazy stuff's going on, and they want to take it even further in Melbourne. Even further, he's not enough. We're talking about, they were already given the dates. First, he said, no, all construction workers and healthcare workers, by the 23rd of September, you will not have a job if you don't get the vaccine unwillingly. So you don't want to have it. I don't care. You're going to take it. So many of them are quitting. Many of them are losing, losing their jobs. And then, because the, the construction workers rose up and said, why? All these two years, it's been fine, and now we're going to get too many cases if we keep going and all this kind of stuff. So they stood up and said, no, I'm not going to be forced to take the vaccine because it is very illegal. Everything they're doing is illegal, but they make it sound. Remember, God talked about over and over in the Bible, unlawful, unlawful, unlawful. What they're doing is lawlessness. The governments are moving in lawlessness. They are literally the ones doing lawlessness, not the ones that don't want to take the vaccine. The ones that don't want to take that vaccine or don't want to buy, obey these restrictions are not the ones being lawless because none of these are laws. They're illegally being pushed on people. So them disobeying a false law is not the law. Now, if you were in the Romans time in Jerusalem or in Israel, when they actually did take over and it was official that the Romans are ruling, and then the soldier says to you, take my, my bag one mile or my coat one mile and you carry it too. Why? Because it became officially taken over, conquered. No problem. But this hasn't. This is illegally and lawfully, lawlessly being pushed on the people. So in Canada and in Australia, right after the construction workers stood up continuously, one day, two days, three days, and in the main news they lie. They show the reaction of the construction workers and say they were violent, but it was the cops pressing them in so they couldn't even leave to go to their cars. So they decided to run through the barrier of the cops coming in, going Whoom, towards them, and then they showed the construction workers running through the cops and say, look how violent the construction workers are. You get it? So they're playing with people so badly. But now, because of this, he announced officially that the, the, the guy in charge of the health, he said now that everyone needs to get vaccinated no matter what job you're doing. From the construction workers only and health workers, he decided that he put a date that everyone's getting vaccinated. And I'm in a messenger groups of people in Australia, friends of mine, man, and it's heartbreaking to hear them, some of the things. And I need you to hear this. It's part of what I'm going to say today. I sit, I'll keep one out person out, but 
I had phone calls from people with their, their, their face down, like devastated when they call me and I'm watching them on video call. What do, what do I do? What do I do? And they, they, some of them are counting how much months they have left without work because they don't want to take it. Um, and then they lose their house. They can't afford to get, because they got four months worth of rent, let's say, or six months or two months. It depends how much money they got in the bank. And then they, they don't know what to do next. And I said to them, listen, man, and to the guys, you have to face what's happening and decide where your breaking point is. Don't live, in other words, consider what you would do, but don't stand with it. You know, you know with us, we consider it, and, and like God says, you know, like Daniel said, not Daniel, Daniel's friends, when they were going to be thrown in the fire, he said, our God will deliver us from the fire. And we are people of faith. We're going to believe that God will deliver us from this happening. He says, but even if he doesn't, we're still not bowing down. You get what I'm saying? So even if it goes to the extreme, even worse what they're planning for Australia, but what's happening in Australia here, where they start saying to you all, because you need to see it, you will be fired if you don't take the vaccine. You need to confront, well, what would you do? You can't run your store if you have a business. You can't run your own business if you don't take the vaccine. What would you do? Where is your breaking point? You gotta decide and then no problem. And if you decide I'm not gonna do it all the way, then you decide is it even unto death? Because you will have a breaking point. Some person that I know there said to me, I can't believe how many have booked their um, appointment to go take the vaccine on Monday, right now, tomorrow. They booked unwantingly, unwillingly. Why? Because they got their two kids walking around. They got a mortgage to pay. They're looking their little kids in the eyes and thinking, I've got to take what I don't want to take. Look what they've done to them. You have to really confront what is going to look like for you. For some of my friends there, they don't have any kids, so it's a little bit easier to make a stronger decision. But don't act like a tough guy to us, I'm saying, just because you're going to go, I'm going to stand all the way and you don't have any kids. Don't act like you can understand what the one that has kids is going through and stop pushing your stance on the ones that's got kids. You have no idea how it feels like if you don't have kids, okay? So I'm saying to you, let's be uh, compassionate with one another and honor one another, even if there's a disagreement, even if we start seeing people going and running to get the stuff that they were not going to get, or even people that have chosen to get vaccine willingly, knowingly, and they love it, or even if they don't want to. Let's learn not to participate in this war with the wrong people. Let's not participate and fight with those who are the victims of this war. And so I told these guys, you have to confront what you will do. Are you willing, when they tell you, you lost your job, are you willing to say, okay, and go? How many months do you have left to pay for your mortgage? We're talking about rental mortgage or even the house, because most people don't own their houses. The bank does. We were all sold a life thinking you need to get this kind of house. Why? So we can get a loan because we can't afford it. And then we're stuck under a yoke of the bank trying to pay it off. So now they're stuck. There's people here and there's people around the world where they're here to make money for their children in Philippines, in India, Sri Lanka. There's students here that are going to school and they had just enough money. Their parents raised up enough money to be able to afford for these young sons and daughters of theirs to come to school here from overseas. And then the school starts saying, you can't keep coming to school unless you're vaccinated. And they don't know what to do. There's people working in different houses that came from Philippines, Sri Lanka, and they were forced. You want to keep your job? Get vaccinated. They didn't want to get it. Many of them. Some of them did. And they got injected. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to make money and send money to their children. So I said, and I'm still saying this to you as well. There is three things that will happen. If these things do happen here too, the options are this, either quit, but then they might stop your water and your electricity because you're not getting vaccinated. Who owns the water and electricity? They do. Remember last week's sermon. 
They got full control over all our necessities. How long, how far are you willing to go? Secondly, you find your breaking point and you take the vaccine. You've got to confront where you're at with what's coming. It will help you, not panic when the time comes. Panic and fear will cause you to do something you maybe you wouldn't have done if you didn't think about it a bit longer. Let me get to this. At this time, in this crucial, it is crucial for God's people to stay close to God. Otherwise, you will deal with what's going on in your flesh. It's very important what I'm about to say. We Christians can either walk our life in our flesh, or like Diana was saying, wake up and realize, hey, my flesh is dead. In other words, my old nature. Because your flesh has fear in it. Walking in your old nature is prone to be infected by fear. You can get fearful quicker, anxious quicker, worried quicker, uh, and unrighteous anger. You might get angry, but it's unrighteous. It's not the righteous anger, because there's a righteous anger that talks about it in the Bible, but there's the unrighteous one. It sounds holy. It sounds like you're saying the right stuff, but your heart, only you can see your heart in God. Is your heart in the Lord while you're angry right now? Because you can convince me with scripture that you are rightfully angry. But is the righteous angle or is it wrong? And that's what we're going to talk about. Walking this out in the spirit is most so important right now. And be careful from not being those people that find out the truth and investigate it and went, wow, look what they're doing to us. Look what's going on. And then you go on to the other side of the coin where you become a person that attacks everybody, calls them stupid for not understanding what the vaccines are really doing and what this agenda because they're not seeing what you see. You also fell on this place and you're also being used like a weapon in Satan's hand to shoot spiritually at people, oppressing them, condemning them and putting them down. Let's not fall from one side to the other side, but let's stay in the spirit. Learn the balance. Galatians 5 verse 16 to 17 says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the desires of the flesh. So there's fleshly desires. It's not just talking about uh, sex before marriage or going to do pornography or masturbation. Also, the desires of the flesh is to get anxious, worried, react in fear, getting jealous, the wrongly jealous. You gave me all this stuff also. It's not just about the this murder and stealing and stuff. It's unrighteously being angry, wrath, malice, envy. All this stuff is not from God. So that your, being in your flesh will cause you to do that. So... God's kingdom is to deal with things in the opposite way many times, which will bring the result. Listen to this. And why I'm saying this is this. There is times where God will call you to do the complete opposite to what you think logically makes sense, to, to deal with what's coming and what's happening. Seriously. But if you already made up your mind and you're like, nah, we've got to stand and do this, maybe we do next week. But this week you were meant to do something else. But if you made up your mind that that's the only way, that's how you always have to react, then you won't hear what he's saying at that moment. So be open, doing it in the spirit, and you will hear how to deal with everything in each moment. It's very important for us at this time, for what's happening. And for those watching, depending on what country you're in. God's, so look, listen to some of the opposite things he will say. Matthew, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to to. to Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48. This is Jesus speaking, and listen to how opposite this sounds. In fact, in one stage, he says this, you want to be the, the king? You want to be the, the highest, the greatest of all? You be the servant of all. What? No, no, I want to be the king. That means I sit on a throne and I tell people what to do. That's a king. He says, no, no, no. You, you don't want to be like the earthly version. I have my own version. What's the, oh, your version? You be the servant of all. The greatest of serving people will make you the king, will make you the greatest of all. You get it? You want to be the greatest of all? That's how you do it. Completely doesn't make sense. Another one that doesn't make sense in the kingdom. You want to have a lot? Give a lot. How am I going to have a lot if I keep giving it? It doesn't make sense. Good, Jesus says. I want to break up your logical mind that gets in the way of the ways and the culture of the kingdom that brings to pass the things of the kingdom. You keep holding to your stuff, you fully says. Your barn can be full, 
and today your soul will be required of you, he says at one stage. In other words, this person kept on saving his belongings. You fool, you're going to take that stuff with you. Today you'll be dying. What, and what did you do? Build big barns so you can keep your stuff when you could have given and helped since you were being blessed so much. He says, you want to have a lot? Give a lot. The same measure you give, it shall be given to you. It doesn't make sense. Because in the world, and our logical mentality is this, keep saving, let me keep saving, and that's how I'm going to have a lot. It doesn't make sense. Logically, that makes sense. Keep saving, and then I'm going to have a lot. Keep keeping the majority, and I'll have a lot. And Jesus says the opposite. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48, I'm going to speak balance here, okay? I'm going to speak this side and this side all the way through, of both ways that Jesus would do things, that still remain in love and in the Spirit. Both ways Jesus would do things, but still remained in love and in the Spirit. Matthew chapter 5, 43 to 48, it says this, You have heard, Jesus speaks, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Stop for a second. Love your enemies. This is not a request. This is Christianity. You want to do it my way, he says? I say to you, you have heard it other ways, but I say to you, love your enemies. Wow. Just a month ago or something, I don't think I was loving my enemies at all. I wasn't praying for them. Let me finish this. And I wasn't doing anything that Jesus, my Lord, who I claim to belong to, none of what he said in this list was I thinking like when I was doing it. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your father in heaven. That's what makes you sons. Because you're acting like how your father would want you to act. Therefore, now you are sons of your father. Don't be acting like sons of the devil. Because Jesus also said to other believers, your father's the devil. And they go, what? Because the works of your father you do. So the, how they were reacting and doing things showed who they were, who was their father, even though they believed God was their father. He said, love, but I said, you love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of of your father in heaven I'm saying this message to me I'm not saying it to you as if I am telling you I've conquered this and you better change a little bit or something I'm saying man it's been difficult because I get messages video calls from people phone calls from people and I hear what's happening in their country and it's hard I don't know what to say sometimes I sit there and For he makes his sun, he makes the sun, sunshine, rise on the evil people and on the good. And he sends rain, doesn't he? Do you see when, they, when you wake up in the morning and the sun shines, does it only shine on you? And then your neighbor, because he's not a Christian, it's like rain and thunderstorms and dark clouds over them. Is that what you see when you wake up in the morning? No. You see a beautiful day. If you're driving, the sun's shining everywhere. It depends on the country you are, right? Look how good he is. He says, he makes the sun shine on the wicked and on the good people. And sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. Do you know what tax collectors were doing? They would betray their own people and collect tax from their own people by those who were enemies to their people. So the Romans were attacking the Jews oppressing them, killing them, using them as slaves in different areas, take my stuff, walk with it. And there was Jews who sold out and said, um, we need tax collectors to, to grab tax that unlawfully, like they were basically stealing money off the people. And the, there was Jews that said, I'll do it. That's why he kept on saying, don't be like the tax collectors. Don't be like the tax collectors. That's why he kept on saying that. Because they were betrayers, selfish, willing to their own gain, save their own life. Don't, you know, take their own stuff from their own mother. They were the lowest of the low back then. So he says, 
if you just love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what do you do more than the others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. I want to talk to you about this side for a second. The one that says, bless those who persecute you. Pray for them. The merciful side. There's a story that I heard one time from a pastor. He had a, a church, sorry, in, yes, in that town. But then in that same town, he saw that they were like building something. And as the weeks go past, he would drive past this area. And he sees that they were building the car park, then the building. And when the building was, guess what? A strip club in his town. So he's a pastor. So he would drive past and say this, in the name of Jesus, the strip club will stop being built in Jesus' name. It will crumble. It will not even open. And then week after week, he'll go past, drive past, because that's where he drives from. And it's getting even more built, getting finished. And he said, in the name of Jesus, I command every principality and power, every evil force that's allowing this to happen will stop in the name of Jesus. He was, and you just bound that and bind and loose and, you know, command, declare, prophesy. And he kept on driving past. It opened. Car park is full of people going into this strip club. And he's commanding and da da da. And he calls a friend pastor. And he says, I've been commanding, declaring, prophesying, binding, loosing, calling down fire. I've done everything. And you know what the other pastor friend said to him? He said, have you tried blessing them? Have you tried doing that bit? Pray for those who despitefully use you, persecute you, bless them. So he went, no. He goes, come on, from now on, and you drive past, bless them. So he went drive past and he started saying, Lord, I bless them that they would see who you are. That they will come to salvation. They will know you, Lord. That your mercy will come upon them and they will see who they really were created to be. Do you know how long it took and the place closed down? Two weeks. The place closed down in two weeks and wouldn't open again. Because he done it that way. Now, is that always the way? No. There's times where you're meant to, in the name of Jesus, I bind and I command. Absolutely. That's why we have to be in the spirit. And he'll tell us when it's time to bless and when it's time to speak against. It's time to stand and protest. Nothing's wrong if it's in the spirit. Because this will be effective when it's in the spirit. Why am I saying this? Because we saw Jesus' life. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Read and look at his life. He wasn't always walking around saying, Jesus loves you. Or I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Like some people walk around, that's all they do. Jesus loves you. Okay. Is that what Jesus did only? Of course he loves me. And of course he says that. Now of course he loves, you know, he's, Jesus loves me. But am I doing what Jesus did? No. Jesus didn't walk around just saying Jesus loves you or I love you, I love you. He also said repent. Turn from your wicked ways. He called people devils. He flipped tables. He called the president of that time, one of them, Herod, a fox. He goes, tell that fox. And there was other times he stayed silent as a sheep goes before his hearers. Where he would turn the other cheek. He wouldn't answer some of their comments and statements that they were trying to provoke him with. He would just be silent. They'll ask him a question and he would just ask another question on top of the question back. There was a time that he would do this and times that he wouldn't. And that's what we got to get in the spirit. By walking in the Spirit, we'll get it right. Note, this doesn't mean we don't speak up. I wrote this anyway. And we just keep our heads in the sand. But it means we speak up in the Spirit, by the Spirit, with God. We do this with God. We stand against unrighteousness with God. And when we do it, we do it standing against who's behind those in the flesh. Hear what I just said. So when we are going to stand, we stand acknowledging in our hearts that who we're standing with is the spirits behind these people that are being used to bring this to pass physically. Why? Because our fight is not against flesh and blood. It's not physical. So you will speak to physical people, but you have the awareness that you're not actually dealing with physical. You're dealing with the force that they have agreed to and are being used by. 
desiring, uh, so we do, do it standing against who's behind those in the flesh desiring the lawlessness and wickedness. Example, when I pray to cast out demons, I'm dealing with a demon inside that person. Yes, I'm looking at that person, but I'm really looking through them to the one influencing or using that person. And I do it from the perspective of compassion for the person in the flesh that is blinded and used by the enemy. Um, love doesn't mean, this is the other side of it, that love doesn't mean you stay quiet or get walked all over. But just like Jesus, who is love, demonstrated that he would call Herod a fox, like I said before, flip tables, rebuke people, especially those who knew scripture. Told people that their father is the devil. Told people constantly to repent if they, uh, uh, and if they don't, they are going to hell. He didn't just walk around and only say, I love you. But there was other times that he stayed silent, that he didn't reply to their foolish statements or questions. Uh, and he also laid down his life. There was a times where he, like we know, he laid down his life for us, where he didn't have to. He said, I can call legions of angels now to my father. He will give me legions of angels to come down. I didn't come for this. He yielded. Conclusion. So going through this with the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, will help you know what respond you should take at each time. Because fighting this in the flesh, or just going through this in the flesh, without fighting, so there's people that are fighting this in the flesh. This is not right, so they're posting, they're standing, which is great, if it's in the Spirit. If you're doing it driven by the Holy Spirit, that that's what you're meant to do, praise God, I'm, I'm all for that. If you're meant to protest, send letters, do this, whatever, I'm all for it. Make sure you're doing it in the Spirit, because there'll be seasons for each thing, and if you're in the Spirit, you'll do it at the perfect timing, what you're doing. Just check yourself, that's all I mean, just check yourself why you're doing it, when you're going to do what you're doing. Um, when you're fighting in the flesh, it'll tire you. It'll literally cause you to get tired. And I'm not talking about, you can be literally making posts and going out there physically, doing physical things which will get you tired, but even not doing anything, but being aware of what's going on and feeling like, there, what can I do? And still not speaking up will also get you tired. Because you're doing it in the flesh, not in the spirit. But in the spirit, you get energized when you're doing things obedient to the Holy Spirit. Um, yes, God's people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. I wrote a note because I say this a lot. In the Bible, it says God's people get destroyed. Why? Because they didn't know something they should have known. And it wasn't because the evidence wasn't there for them to research. They just chose not to. So they got destroyed because of the lack of knowledge about that area. It wasn't God's will. It, they didn't have to get destroyed. But, I wrote, finding out and knowing the info that you found out, because you investigated, without staying close to God in the Spirit, can also destroy you. Double-edged sword. It's this, that's why you have to find the balance. You can find the information, hear out the doctors, hear out these guys that know what's going on, this massive worldwide agenda to bring stuff into this earth right now. It's literally happening. But do it in the spirit and you'll know what to do. You will not get caught up and feel like, man, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. Three scriptures. I'm nearly finished. To remember. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Remember that. Okay? Second one. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this age, of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's what our fight is. There is a fight, but that's how we come to it. It can look physical, just like baptism. And if you do something physical that the Holy Spirit led you to do, it will break out something in the spirit. So if it is standing to protest, it'll break out something in the spirit. If it is posting a post, it'll break out something in the spirit because you did something that the Holy Spirit told you because you did it in the spirit. It says in the Bible, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. You can choose to have it. You can have the Holy Spirit and live in him, but you don't walk him out because you've chosen to walk in the flesh. Third scripture, Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Remember this scripture too in these times. 
Jesus said, now notice the context, he's on the cross. He, he was whipped. Cat and nails ripped out much, much of his skin. He's hanging on a cross and the same people that nailed him on the cross are right there. Some of the same soldiers that were mocking him and beating him were right there. And he's up there and says this, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Remember that scripture through this time that we're going through right now. We need it. We need to forgive them. Remember, they knew how to use the hammer. They knew this was a hand and they were putting a nail and they knew that they're piercing a hand. They're piercing feet. They know what they were doing. They know they're whipping a, a person right now. Doesn't matter if they believed he was the son of God or not. They were willing to knowingly do this, yet Jesus is up in pain. Not after he's healed, in pain, saying, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. That is crazy. Not Jesus is crazy. That's crazy to us in the logical sense. It doesn't make sense. Why? Because he surpassed their, those physical tormentors of his. He surpassed his physical enemies that were killing him, scorching him, and saw who it is that's blinded the mind of the unbeliever. And he said, I forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. Wow. We need this heart in this time. And we have it. We have Christ in us, the hope of glory. We need to live in the Spirit so we don't fulfill the desires of the flesh. And like I said, it doesn't mean that you won't speak up. Jesus spoke up many times. He flipped tables. He went into a place that was unjust what they were doing, unrighteous, and he started flipping the tables of people and threw them out. This is the same Jesus. So I'm not saying you stay quiet and tame. Oh, no, we can't do anything. We've got to be silent. No, that is not true. The same Jesus who is love did both sides. It just has a specific time for each one. And we've got to make sure we're not in the wrong place when we're doing reacting something. We're not in the flesh instead of the spirit. Last couple of things. Hold on to hope. This is very important. Because through these phone calls and video calls I've been getting and messages in the groups, I'm hearing hopelessness. I can't take this anymore. I've been crying all day. I'm hearing this stuff from people I love. And I sit and they go, because you can say, love your enemies. And they're going, what? What do you mean? My child's going to go hungry. You understand how this sounds? You can quote a scripture. But they're looking at their child. And they are really going to lose their job tomorrow. You get what I'm saying? It's not a game. It's not some theory. They're living this out. So you're like, what do you say? The same thing that he said. I can't change. He is Lord. That's the truth. I am a, his preacher of his word, not my word, not my opinion. So this is the stuff we'll have to reply. This is the stuff I'll have to say to you when you're calling me. Hopefully not, because things don't get worse. But if they do, and please do, we're going to need to encourage one another. When this happens, we need each other. You need to be honest. If you're struggling, you say, I'm struggling. I feel like giving up. Say it. And we'll be together and encourage one another to stay strong. God will give us wisdom what to do. Even if, uh, even if death, guys, I am personally willing to starve to death. That's what I'm at. I just want you to know. This doesn't sound... This sounds crazy for here because we're living in Cyprus and the restrictions don't sound that bad yet. But in Canada and Australia, if you say this, they're going, ah, I get you. Because it's really happening. They'll shut down the electricity, their waters, they're going to do it. Seize their accounts. Where are you going to get your money from? And they've been trying different angles. To maybe get another job like this, they've been literally, the government's been making sure they're posting people everywhere, man. Crazy stuff going on. So hold on to hope. It's very important. Why? In the Bible, there's a scripture that says this, and it's in Proverbs. 
Hope deferred makes a heart sick. Hope that gets taken away or the hope disappears from you, it'll make you sick. So that's what Satan wants. He wants us to make, to make us feel hopeless. He wants them, what's happening in Australia now, to feel like there's no hope. Either got to take the vaccine or not take it, I'm going to lose my house and everything. That's what's going on in them right now. And they don't know what's next. Maybe it won't continue, okay? Because they're raising up, they're waking up, they're understanding the law more. It's amazing what's going on as well at the same time. The, one of the, the uh, whatever they're called there now, I forgot, like prime ministers or whatever, or premiers of New South Wales, another state, she resigned, just stepped down out of the blue because they said that they found corruption. So things are moving. But don't lose hope even if you can't see. Why? Because we might not see it immediately, so you will lose hope. But we are people that it says in the Bible, we live by faith, not by what we see. You must keep this in your head. This is also important scripture. We live by faith, not by sight. Because Satan will use sight to, to steal your faith. Satan will get you to see what's not got happening to make you go, but where is it? It's getting worse. Yeah, I've been praying. Why hasn't it changed? And your hope is disappearing, making you sick, making you unrighteously angry, making you react, making you bring a uh, lack of peace in your own house with your husband, with your daughter, with your mom, with whoever. Because you just, I can't take it anymore. That's what you do. You use the tricks and the way we stay in the spirit is by putting into action the things of the spirit. We live by faith, trust. That's what faith means. We live by trusting our God, not by what we're seeing. And I want to read your scripture, second last, before we finish. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 14 to 17. These kings were trying to make war and do evil things. And every time this king was trying to attack this other king, Elisha would see it in the spirit. So he would warn the other kings. So all the other kings were always ready for the attack. So they will come up in secret with another attack. Okay, at night time, six o'clock, we're going to do this and we're going to come and ambush them while they're all sleeping. So God gives him and tells him again what, what they're planning to do in secret. So he tells the kings. So they're ready. And he goes, who is doing this? Is there a spy in our midst telling us all our secrets when we're trying to take them down? And he goes, no, no, no. One of them goes, no, no, there's a prophet. They have a prophet. And he's the one who keeps seeing everything and telling them. Isn't that amazing? What's available to us? <laughs> uh, and that's also a real prophet. What happens next is this. Someone realized it was the prophet that was making sure that he was telling the plans. So then he says, therefore, this king sent horses and chariots and a great army there to, to get Elisha. And they came by night and surrounded the city. This is the same guy that sees every secret plan that they were making. So they came by night to attack the same guy that sees everything beforehand anyway. And when he, the servant... The servants of the man of God arose early and went out. So they were there, already surrounded the place from the night time, waiting. The servant, picture it, Elisha the prophet is, or maybe, you know, praying in tongues or something, you know, I don't know, you know, worshiping God. But the servant goes outside and arose early and went out. And there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he's, ah! why? Because he's seen, really, there's a real army. This is really bad. We're stuffed. What are we going to do? So he answered, do not fear. If I was him, I'd be like, what do you mean don't fear, man? Look at this, this. You know, I probably wouldn't have said that. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> Tell me why, what's happening? For those who are with us are more than those that are with them. Now remember, he's looking at this as like, who, who's with us? It's just me and you, mate. I don't know what you're talking about. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes, his servant's eyes, that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So this physical army came. And in the spirit, it was probably demons also going with them because remember, everything's inspired by the demonic. 
And Elisha is seeing this in the physical, but he can only simul- also simultaneously see in the spiritual. And he sees, and he's like... <coughs> so, he, so the servant doesn't see that. He's like, look how many we go surrounded. And he's like, don't fear, man. Look, Lord, open his eyes. Can you open his eyes, please? And he sees that there's so many more for us than there were against us. So this is what we need. Even if our eyes don't open in the spiritual... Trust the Lord that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. So we can... He, see, Elijah didn't have any scriptures to go back on to trust God like this. We have scriptures, promises, and stuff that God came through for His people over and over, and we do the same thing even if we get thrown into fires. If it's not our time, we'll be in the fire with Jesus, worshipping Jesus and not burning. If they throw us in the lion's den or whatever, we'll be with the lions. They're hungry. I'm also hungry. Just sitting there talking to the lion. How you been, mate? You all right? Good. Yep. Cool. And they come open up the cage because we just can't get eaten. It's not our time. If you stay in the Lord when it's not your time, it's not your time. No one can take your life. To finish, in these times, if you keep yourself close to God why, uh, while learning this crazy evil truth about their real agenda while watching the oppression happening in other nations by legal force by legal force and experiencing the oppression yourself with a job loss if you don't comply etc you will fall apart your own strength can only take you so far you need to face what's coming this is the conclusion and make a decision how far you are willing to take this uh, Example, I'm willing to lose my job, I'm willing to lose my house, I'm willing to go hungry, etc. There is hope even if they force vaccinate you. Listen to what I just said. Even if they force vaccinate us, which that's the only way I'm going to get vaccinated, by the way. <laughs> if they throw me on the ground, pin me down and they're injecting me, it doesn't matter. Why? Because I fulfilled scripture. Even if I drink any deadly thing, it will not harm me. Because I'm not taking it like a little arrogant person going, tempting the Lord my God and saying, doesn't matter. I'm going to take the vaccine. And if they, if they, you know, God says nothing deadly will happen to me, that's arrogant and tempting. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. You don't do it on purpose and then quote a scripture that is going to protect you. It's if they do it to you and you aren't willing or knowing about it, that's when the Lord protects you. So if they're going to do that to me, no problem. But secondly, I want to say, this is the hope I have. This is where I'm, I'm, I'm at. And I'm telling you to be the same. But even if you choose to be vaccinated, in other words, your breaking point is, if they tell you, get the vaccine or you lose your job, and you're thinking, man, I have three kids in the Philippines, or I have my kids here, and I have them all, I, I can't. I, I'm not willing to go that far. I'm going to go take it. We do not condemn anybody that chooses this. Okay, you, we love our neighbor. We love our brothers and sisters, okay? They're not, we're not at war with them. They're where they're at. That's it. That's where, where their faith is. Doesn't matter. Let's keep encouraging them for that to grow. But have hope. Why? Because there's already this doctor called Judith something. Mukovic, I forgot her name. What is it? Makoch, Mukovic, whatever. Huh? Anyone remember her name? Mikovic. Amazing. We're talking about... This is a virology expert everything man we're not talking about just the doctor crazy expertise and lots of crazy expert friends around her and they are very confident that they're coming up with something to reverse what these vaccines are doing to people absolutely that's my second part so in the physical there's already a cure taking place from physical elements okay so I want, I'm just trying to show you the hope so even if you took it now already, and uh, because you were pushed, or someone watching right now because you were pushed, there is hope. Secondly, even greater than that, God is raising up, and I've said this before, an army of people that believe the Lord, that by His stripes we are healed. These are Christians that will lay hands on the sick, lay hands on those who have been poisoned by this drug, even if they knew that it was poison at the beginning or not, they actually thought it was good for you. It doesn't matter what the reason is. If they come and say, look, I want you to pray for me. I don't want this anymore. I've been getting side effects. I've done the wrong thing. Come here. They don't have to apologize to us. They didn't do it to us. They did it to themselves. Of course, shedding is kind of to everybody else, but 
We pray for them, and in the name of Jesus, we expect that every chemical, everything that was injected them will dissolve. Every, even if it's a technology that went into them, everything, everything that went to destroy the, the DNA, it doesn't matter what it was, it'll be healed, recovered, the poison disappeared. This is our Lord. He's done it over and over, and so that's the other massive hope that's raising up with Christians going, what's wrong, you took the vaccine and you regret it, come here. You want me to pray so it dissolves? Cool. Because if you think it's protecting you, cool, keep it. Well done. All right. You that doesn't want it, come. I'm going to pray for you. And boom. And expect. This is going to happen. You watch. These guys that are expecting many to die because of the vaccines that they've done to people, they're going to be wondering, how come so many are not dying? Because the Christians rose up. Believe their Lord, that greater is He that is in them, that He that is in the world, that they will do greater works than He did because they went to the, He went to the Father. That he cast out demons, healed the sick. Doesn't matter if it was physical, demonic possession. Doesn't matter what it was. Nothing is impossible with God. It doesn't matter if some technical stuff. God doesn't go, oh, no, I can't do anything. This is nanotechnology. This is God, man. He'll be like, Zzz. destroys it. They peer it out. I don't care how nano it is. Peer it out, man. It's gone. Amen? Amen. That's who you can be. Let's believe and let God build us up, not just for us, but for them. Amen.